Hey, welcome to User Defined Functions video 5. In this video, I'm going to talk about a concatenation function called concatif. It takes in four arguments one, a concat range, two, a criteria range, right here, three, a criteria to compare with the criteria range, and then four, a separator. The idea behind this is to sort of make a concatenation function that acts a lot like a countif or a sumif. So for instance, if we have a range of team members and teams, and I want to just say, hey, give me a concatenation of people on the green team, I would go into my concatenate function and then type in green right here. And it should give me a list or a concatenation of everyone associated with green. And then also it takes uh, the my separator argument, kind of like in the previous concat range video I made, and I can change that as well to whatever I want, or, you know, to nothing if I, if I choose. So I'm going to show you how I made this, and I'm actually going to move this down here, um, kind of show you the way it was meant to be used. So rather than saying green, I'm going to say something like this. Then I'm going to put a comma in there and a space. Send it down. And it's kind of used like that. So I could just say all members. Format paint it. Let me know if you have any questions by leaving a comment below. And I'll do my best to answer it. OK, let's get started. So go to your IDE, or your Visual Basic Editor, by pressing Alt F11. And that'll bring up this window right here. If you're unfamiliar with Visual Basic or VBA at all, you may want to go visit a beginner's tutorial. I, I kind of skim over the parts of it, but basically this is the place where we're going to type our code. This is a locals window, and if I'm debugging my code, I use this to keep track of my variables. This is my project window, which has the files I'm, I have open currently and the modules I'm using. And these are my controls. So this is my start, my pause, my break. Um, I can use my debug to set breakpoints to step into or step around. Anyway, if you don't know about that yet, I would suggest going to check out maybe a beginner's VBA tutorial. So first, I wanted to kind of talk about this function. Like I've mentioned before in other videos, every programming language uses functions, and they all kind of work similar in a way. So they take arguments, which are these things separated by commas, and they usually spit something out. So unlike a routine, a subroutine, or a method, a function has a return value. So when we create a user-defined function specifically within Excel, we always have to think of it in terms of, okay, what are we returning out of it? So in order to start writing, I'm just going to double-click this and say, hey, function concat if. My first argument is going to be the range I'm going to concat. So I'm going to call it concat range, and I can just Technically, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to say it's a variant because I don't know necessarily if it's going to be a range of integers or a range of strings or whatever. So I'm going to say variant. The second range would be, or the second argument would be a criteria range. So what range are we comparing our concat range with? And I'm also going to call this a variant because I do not know what kind of types are going to be in there. And the third one I'm going to say is a string. I'm just going to call it criteria. So I'm going to declare my criteria variable as a string and my sep argument or variable also as a string. Then once I'm done with that, I need to type the whole function. So what's my return value going to be? And I'm going to say, well, it's going to be a word with commas. So I'm going to say as string. OK, so I guess the first thing we should do is kind of talk about how we're going to do this. And what I was thinking was we would iterate through each item in the concat range and the criteria range. Basically see if every time we look at a cell in the criteria range we're going to say hey does that cell equal criteria and if it does equal criteria I'm going to attach that to another variable that I'm going to call current string. And so when it's, once it's done looping through all of the possible cells within this range and this range I'm going to have my concat if function equal the current string amount. So uh, that's probably kind of quick. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to say dim current string as a string. I'm going to set my current string to null or double quote or blank or whatever. And then I can start on my looping structure. So in this case I'm going to use a for loop and I'm going to use a function that I can attach to collections called count. So I'm going to say for i equals 1 to my concat range dot count like so. So that means it's going to go from 1 to however many values are in this concat range. 
and once it hits the final value, or however many cells I've highlighted, it'll quit. I'm going to close out the 4 by writing next i, and then uh, once I have that loop set up, then I can say, okay, so what's going to happen as it goes through each one of these cells? I'm going to use the criteria range, and I'm going to set it at criteria range i. So that's like saying, so whatever i is, that value, that index in criteria range, I'm going to check if that's equal to criteria. So if I'm going to go if criteria range at index i is equal to criteria, then, and then I'm going to have a concatenation right here, and right here I'm just going to end if. So my concatenation will be current string equals current string ampersand concat range at index of i. So if at the first loop it would be the first item if this criteria range, if this evaluated to true. And then I'm going to attach my sep to the back of it. So once I'm done with that, that's pretty much it. Judging by looking at this, I know that because I put my sep at the very end of this, it will always be at the very end. So what I can do is actually delete the separator off of the string, which would be like a comma or a period or something, by using a left function. So I could say current string equals the left of current string. And then my length would be pretty much the length of the current string minus the length of my separator. And close that off, and then that should be it. Then all I have to do is say, hey, concat if is equal to current string like so. Okay, so I know that was pretty quick, and uh, if you do have any questions, pl please feel free to comment and let me know. But I'll show you what that looks like if we go back to the Excel page. I'm just going to delete this to make sure it works. I'm going to say equals concat if, control shift A for my arguments, my concat range, I'm going to concat the members, F4 to lock, my criteria range is going to be this guy, F4 to lock, my criteria is going to be this, because I'm just going to go down, and I'm going to set my separator equal to a comma and a space. And so if I hadn't have written that left function, that current string equals left current string function, I would have one of these guys at the end. Okay, so clearly I've made a pretty big mistake here. Um, and if we look at it, if it says Jennifer, Ta uh, Dave, so based on that, I'm guessing that, I'm not guessing, I actually know, I put the left string in the wrong place. So after debugging this, I realized that I put these two statements in the for loop, and I should put them after. That being said, once I put them after, it should work. So what's happening, it was uh, basically running, hitting these pieces of code each time it would run through each cell. So we actually didn't want it to do that, we needed it to uh, hit these at the very end once the concurrent string had been fully built. So if I run this again, there we go. All right, that looks better. And then bring it down. Alrighty, so let me know if you have any questions. You can leave a comment below, and I will do my best to answer that. Thanks again for watching.